Right, uh, I'm just going to jump in at the front of this video. So I've got everyone watching. Uh, shout out to all the patrons. Thanks for your support. Love it. Um, we've had a great trip and I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this content. Now, you will notice that Patreon's become a really big part of this channel. And the reason for that is it's gone from a hobby to a full-time job. And don't think for a minute that I'm complaining. Smiles on my dial. I'm loving what I'm doing. And it's a an unbelievable opportunity to be able to do what I am doing. But a huge part of that is Patreon. The support that I'm getting from there is allowing me to do what I'm doing. Without it, it's not going to keep going on. So I need to keep growing it to, its, to a point where I'm comfortably financially to keep doing what I'm doing. I, I've sort of taken this year to do this and take a little bit of a financial hit. But I'm luckily that I'm in a position where I can do that. But without the Patreon support, I can't keep doing it. So I need to keep growing it. So if you're thinking about it, jump in the link below. It'll take you over to Patreon. Now, it's only $5 a month at the lowest tier. 60 bucks a year. Think about the amount of content that I'm putting out. Think about how often do you watch this channel. If you're a regular viewer, I'd love to see you over there for 5 bucks a month. Um... If you can afford the higher tiers, oh, please do it. But any sort of support is really appreciated. If you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. If you haven't made a comment, get in the comments. Make a comment. I will answer them. Um, just I love the support that I'm getting, and I'm hoping that people are really enjoying the content and you're enjoying it enough to support me. So just go and check it out. If it's not your thing, hey. I've got t-shirts and hoodies for sale. Jump over and uh, send in the email here, send me an email. Say, and I'll let you know what colors and that we've got, sizes, whatever. But any sort of support, get on there and do it for me because then we can keep going with what we're doing. over the bridge Here we are, walking in, uh, in the dark, obviously. But we've just driven through a bloody good snowstorm to get here. And it's as wet as wet. We've had over an inch of rain at home over the last few days. and uh, But it looks like we've just cracked another cold front, and we're heading in straight after it. So as, you, as you'll know, I love hunting this sort of weather. And uh, hopefully the next few days we'll produce the goods for Joey all the way from Torquay, eh? That's it, mate. Yep. So, Great to be here. Yep. Uh, it's quite chilly. It was minus one at the vehicle when we left it. So it's the 1st of November. And uh, here we are, all rugged up in snow. Who would have thought, eh? Great Victorian alpine weather. You never know what to expect. Anyway, come along with us and we'll see how we go. I know some people are probably wondering how do you navigate in the, in the dark, apart from the headlight. Here we go, I've got Avenza maps up on my phone and um, it's quite difficult to see far enough um, so having the phone out and having a track that you can follow so see the orange line there I've tracked that out in the daylight where I could really easily see where I needed to be and um, now I can make sure that that little blue dot is very close to that line and I know I'm in the right area it saves me wandering around in the dark looking for landmarks which are very hard to do in the dark anyway so that's how I do it 2nd of November and I'm shivering gloves on hands are frozen I've got bloody hand warmers in my pockets glassing across here the, what's rain at this level is snow, just a little bit higher. 
You can see snow on the hill. Proper cold. We spotted 10 deer this morning, so the um, conditions are perfect. But I think the deer are moving into the thicker gullies to try and stay warm. But this afternoon, I think it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be good. Just got to find, find a good stag. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how cold it is. Thermal top on and everything, and I'm still shivering. Yeah, a bloody pesky possum came in again last night. Tell you what, he's proper annoying. And I've got a leak in my mattress, which is real handy. <laughs> it's going down every hour or so. Keep pumping it up. Stop. Yeah. Yeah. So they should. Hey, I know. Fingers are frozen. What's that? My fingers are frozen. Bloody bit about something. Those other ones. Oh no, it's just a big old deal. Oh, it is, isn't it? I thought it was going to be a little one. Picked up a bit of water. It's not too bad, but we're still filtering it anyway. Can you smell him? Do you smell? Notice the hair falling out of her neck, changing to her summer coat.
All right, we've got to rip a fire going and um, gave it a good afternoon. Saw three hinds down in this little tight gully that sort of always seemed to have success in after a rough bit of rough weather. And then uh, we sort of hunted back, trying to hunt with the wind. But anyway, we bumped a deer and it just moved off on us. We didn't get a look at it. And then right at last light, we went to a little um, glassing spot we've got near camp and spotted a stag cross on a wallow. Couldn't tell how big, but he looked big and mature in body. So we're going to have a good look for him in the morning. Hopefully this possum stays away tonight. I am over him. Well, my uh, mattress has got a leak in it. I went down half a dozen times last night. So it's not holding a lot of air, and especially when I put my body weight on it, it goes flat pretty quick. But luckily, in the stash of crap that's on this ridge, I found this old beaten up rat chewed mattress and it's got actual foam in it. So I'm going to lay that down on the ground and then put my uh, mattress on top of it. So at least give me some sort of cushioning. So I just had an awesome glassing session. Saw a bunch of deer. But we couldn't get on to anything mature, so we're going to stalk our way into some fresh country and spend the day glassing into some really nice warm spots because it's been freezing cold for this time of year with the deer losing their, summer, uh, their winter coats and getting their summer coats. I reckon they're feeling the cold a lot more than normal.
spider orchid. Brett found one. We spent the late morning and into the early afternoon glassing around this other system but only picked up one hind. I think most of the deer are bedded but we we're hoping to pick up a bedded deer. But so um, it's about three o'clock. We're going to make a move on those deer that we saw this morning that I didn't get a real good look at. Definitely know there's a mature deer in amongst them. I didn't see how big his antlers were though. Um, so we're going to stay above them and use the thermals and uh, the wind direction to um, stay above them and hopefully they feed out from underneath us or we might sneak down into their bedding area see if we can catch up with them there's a bunch of them in there so might be a bit of fast action Didn't do any good looking for those deer in that spot I'd seen the deer this morning, so they've come back around to where we had about 10 deer this morning feeding. We did spot a hind and a yearling at about 4 o'clock, so we watched her for a bit. Yeah, nothing else with her that we could see. So we've snuck around, we've got across from this face. Look at it really hard and hope that a mature deer comes in with this group of deer that's living here. If he comes down, you have to shoot him. Okay. If he comes down, you have to shoot him. Okay. I shot one nearly identical to him on the same hill. What's that? I shot one nearly identical to him on the same hill. I think it's genetic? No, it's just old. It's just old. Oh, he's a big boy. I'm hoping he'll walk into it. Yeah, that's wonky from this morning. She's a... It's coming down. Yeah, He's going to get a bit of trouble if he keeps going down. It's dark. Yeah, he's been wallowing in black. There's black wallows up there. That's your deer. Stag about 360 meters, just in behind the head of a tree. We're all dialed up, ready to go. It's just got to come into a bit of a clearing for us, and we're on. We've got deer everywhere this afternoon. You can take him, but he gets set up somewhere. Oh, that's awesome. That big tree that is in is three thirty uh three sixty-three meters. Are you comfortable?
Dropped him. Reload, reload. Reload. Stay on him. Squeeze the shot, mate. Squeeze the trigger. Dropped him. Reload, reload. Reload. Stay on him. So he gets up, you pump another one into him. Watch him. He's, he's trying to get up, down to the left. Squeeze the shot, mate. Squeeze the trigger. Oh. Dropped him. Reload. Right, hey. Joe's just pulled off a good shot. It's dropped him. We've been watching him for about five minutes. The bushes were moving. He's, there's no movement now. His ant antlers were in the air moving. His leg was kicking. Nah, it's, all, it's all finished. So now we've got a bit of a job ahead of us. We've got to get across the river, get up there and find him before dark. So good. Thank you, mate. It's awesome. No worries at all. <laughs> Great shooting. Yeah, so fun. It happened. I had that feeling this afternoon, didn't it? We felt it. good walking through here. We did, yeah. I thought we were going to shoot one walking through here. Yeah. And then watching them up high yeah. there. Well, we must have seen eight of them up there. Oh, a bunch of deer up high, moving along and moving everywhere. And then just out of the corner of my eye, I spot this deer just cruising through the uh, clearing, and I've just got, oh, that's one we're interested in. And I reckon it's the one that came out to the wallow last night. You reckon it's the one from Definitely, yeah. yeah. Good solid deer, so let's get over there and find him, eh? Here we are. What a bull. Big bodied bugger. Dark. Well rubbed. He's awesome. Yeah, look at him. He's got all the sawdust in yeah. his antlers. Yeah, he's, we've got a little bit of video of him doing a bit of thrashing and stuff, so he's been very active. He hasn't really got any mud on him, but so anyway, he's um, a solid deer, big mature boy. And um, yeah, Joe's done a, a great job of squeezing off the shot just as he walked through a little gap at 360 metres. Awesome. We had to wait for him, didn't we? We did have to wait. We, yeah. had him, we had him pinned for a while, but he's just in the heads of this tree in front of us, actually. Yeah. And um, we just were willing him out. And I said, oh, if he goes, he's going to go through that gap there. So I trained the camera in on that and had it ready to go. And when he decided to move, it, it happened yeah. quick, didn't it? I was sort of hoping that he'd stop in there. And then I realised, oh, he's not going to stop. Yeah. I just got to shoot while he's yeah. just slowly sort of going through. No, he did well. So yeah. as you'll see in the shot, it went a little bit further forward than probably where uh, Joe was aiming. But it's got spine and it's just drilled him. Um, we haven't actually had a look at the the bullet entry yet, but I'm guessing it's, um, by feeling that, I reckon he's a little bit bruised under there, so it's got the spine on the base of the neck into the chest, but yeah, it's dropped him on the spot. We stayed on him for a few minutes and made sure that the, the thrashing had stopped and we knew he'd have kicked his last. So, yeah, great job. Awesome. Seven mil rem mag. Seven mil rem mag, yeah, 162 grain Hornady, SFC. Yep. Yep. It uh, stopped him, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And yeah. you got a VX5 3 to 15. Yep. Beautiful scope. Yep. As you know, I run one of them on the 30A6 as well. So, yep. yeah. It makes it, yeah, it's, you know, range and then dial. Yeah. It yep. makes it a lot simpler than, it does, than it? without having that. So, yeah, so. good. Mm. Anyway, we've got a little bit of work to do now. And <laughs> we've got about 30 minutes of light left. So, we better get to it. Awesome, thank you mate. No worries, so good. Well done. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. So I was just rolled over Joe's stag uh, looking for the bullet entry and as you can see it was a perfect shot. Um, when I replayed the footage I thought it had hit more up here and that's why he dropped but that has um, taken both lungs and it's probably disrupted his spine. It could have been, it's nearly a, a shoulder, a high shoulder shot. Yeah. Um, not quite, it's right on his shoulder blade, but anyway, it dropped him though, that's it? why I drilled him. <laughs> and we just did a rough measure with my hands and he's come up at uh, 25 by 23 and a half, but he's got a lot of tip damage. So I'm guessing that he would have been, you know, here he's missing, you know, an inch. So he was 25 on that antler, or so plus, plus the inch, so 26. And then you can see here, you know, you extend that up. He's probably 25 or so on that side. So, yeah. He's pretty um, beat up too, isn't he? Got oh, yeah. He's, he's been, he's been, uh, 
Yeah, that's a massive. Yeah, he's, he's been given a bit of a touch up by somebody. Yeah. All these big scars on his neck, so that's from Antlers coming in past his guard when he's been fighting, running past him. Yeah, that big one on his back. Yeah. Hang on. A ripper. Joe's just trying to work out his meat shelf on his stone glacier backpack here. So, got the back straps in the heart. Tuck it in next to your back. The weight in there, it just makes it much easier to carry. Because we've got to go across the river and up to there. And it's already 20 past 8. <laughs> That's it. So I get that antlers. Sorry, mate, messing around. It's all right. There you go, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of a channel just right at the last sort of five metres. Take your time there, mate. Nearly back to camp. Oh, sweating. It's all worth it. Caught another little drag. Hey, mate. How's the lockout going? There you go, Mr. Jones from Tasmania. First clients trying out the walking technique you gave me. Thanks, thanks for the tip. I reckon that's good. Seems to be working, doesn't it? Get a little tiny mini micro rest every step. Small hill. <laughs> yeah, we're doing well. <laughs>